Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition's top stories. Quarantine and isolation measures used to tackle COVID-19. The Department of Health and Wellness advises on the use of face masks. And WASCO urges the public to conserve water. Hello and thank you for joining us at the Information Command Center for the National Response to COVID-19 as we bring you the latest developments. The government of St. Lucia tackles the COVID-19 pandemic with the measures of quarantine and isolation for persons who may be in contact with someone with the virus. More in this report from Fernel Neptune. As St. Lucia continues to respond to the global pandemic of COVID-19, the Ministry of Health and Wellness stresses on the need to place individuals in quarantine and isolation to prevent the spread of the virus. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belma george outlined the difference between quarantine and isolation. We use quarantine for persons who are well and who may have been exposed to a communicable disease. So these are people who feel well, they do not, they're asymptomatic, that's what we call it, with no signs and symptoms, and they may have been exposed. So we monitor them during that incubation period to see whether or not they develop signs and symptoms. But in, if they do develop signs and symptoms, you would then need to isolate them. And during isolation is for persons who are showing signs and symptoms, that is, they are sick. Many times isolation would be done in a hospital or healthcare um, type setting where they can get treatment as well. Um, isolation is even stricter because when you develop the signs and symptoms, it means that you, you have the capacity to spread it to other persons. Dr. Belma George also spoke on the procedures put in place for individuals in isolation, given that it requires stricter conditions. From the beginning of isolation, we would have done the tests to see if you're negative or positive for the disease that you were exposed. So we would do the test and we would keep you within the facility. It would be a single room and we would give you the necessary treatment until um, after the isolation period of the disease when you've recovered we would then retest you and until you get a negative test we would then allow you to go home. The chief medical officer emphasized on the need for individuals to comply with the rules and regulations of the quarantine act. The quarantine authority is the chief medical officer. So the chief medical officer has the powers to determine the location and the type and, determine, and designate an area a quarantine site. The chief medical officer also has the power to decide which persons or things become within isolation, within the quarantine facility, and also indicate who can enter or leave the quarantine facility. The, it also gives the police the power to arrest, even without a warrant, someone who, who does not comply with the rules and regulations of the quarantine facility which is said by the, by the quarantine officer, who's the chief medical officer. The Ministry of Health and Wellness appeals to St. Lucians to continue adhering to the measures put in place to protect the nation from the virus. Reporting from the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. With St. Lucia recording a total of 14 cases of COVID-19 and the confirmation of local transmission, a number of measures have been put in place to curb the spread of the virus. One such measure was the implementation of a 24-hour national shutdown. However, effective Tuesday, April 7, 2020, the shutdown was reduced to a 10-hour curfew from 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. Some of the national protocols include staying at home as much as possible unless it is for food or medical purposes, avoiding mass crowd events and social gatherings, and practicing social distancing and good personal hygiene. One of the recommendations included the use of face masks or scarves when going to public places such as the supermarkets. Chief Medical Officer in the Department of Health and Wellness, Dr. Sharon Belmar George, indicated that a face mask or scarf may be used for source control by reducing potential exposure from infected persons during the pre-symptomatic period. For face masks to be effective in reducing infection, they must be used properly. Some basic guidelines to keep you safe include 
Ensure the mask is clean before using. Wash your hands with soap and water or alcohol-based hand sanitizer before touching the mask. The mask should be held by the ties or the loops only. The coverings should be fit snugly but comfortably and allow for breathing without restriction. Do not touch your eyes, nose or mouth when the mask is on your face and when removing the face mask. The reusable masks should be washed daily with soap and water after use. The medical supply masks such as surgical masks and N95 masks should be reserved for healthcare workers, first responders and people who are known to be sick. The Chief Medical Officer urged the public to continue practicing good hygiene, which will aid in the prevention of the spread of COVID-19. The public is reminded, as always, to focus on the maintenance of standard recommendations to prevent the spread of infection. That is regular hand washing with soap and water or alcohol-based hand sanitizer where soap and water is not available. To cover your mouth and nose with disposable tissues when coughing and sneezing. Avoid close contact with anyone showing symptoms of respiratory illness, such as coughing and sneezing. The public is also reminded as they go shopping in the supermarkets to avoid contact with surfaces. Take what you need and avoid touching many products at any one time. Also, if you develop respiratory signs and symptoms, that is fever, cough, soft throat, runny nose, do not go to the supermarket at this time. As usual, we'll continue to advise the public on measures to reduce the impact of COVID-19. That was Chief Medical Officer in the Department of Health and Wellness, Dr. Sharon Belmar George. Mayor of Castries, His Worship Peterson Francis, showered high praise on and gave exceptional credit to the Department of Health and Wellness and the Government of St. Lucia for undertaking the mammoth task of opening the Owen King European Union Hospital. The transition from Victoria Hospital to the Owen King EU Hospital was completed in March. Speaking to the move, Mayor Francis says it will positively benefit the city of Castries and by extension St. Lucia. He indicated, quote, I know that the government had been working feverishly and putting structures in place to open the new facility. This is why when we received a call to assist in the transition, we did not hesitate, unquote. The mayor highlighted that the contributions of St. Lucia's medical professionals are extraordinary. They work extremely hard, often with limited resources. He explained that as St. Lucia fights this COVID-19 pandemic, the healthcare system continues to be strained. However, the completion of the transition should reaffirm assurance in all. This is NTN Nightly. Stay with the broadcast. We'll be right back. Wash your hands. Wash them right. With soap and lots of water. Get between fingers. Get under the nails. Go above the wrists. Do this for no less than 15 seconds. Rinse properly. Dry with a clean towel. If there is no water, do the same washing motions with an alcohol-based hand sanitizer containing at least 70% alcohol. Wash your hands. Wash them right. This message brought to you courtesy the Bureau of Health Education of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. As the battle against the COVID-19 pandemic continues, health officials highlight that the virus may also take a toll on an individual's mental health. Director of the Human Services Division, Beverly Ann Poyot, speaking on the national television network, NTN, the Information Command Center for the National Response to COVID-19, highlighted strategies to aid with the psychological impact of the pandemic. Anisia Antoine has the details. Health officials are concerned about the potential mental health effects of the emerging threat of the spread of COVID-19 in St. Lucia. The Director of Human Services, Beverly Poyot, explained that the social isolation, as well as the fear of contracting the virus, may psychologically affect individuals in different ways. Poyot highlighted strategies that can be employed on a daily basis to better cope with the psychological effects, including keeping a schedule, staying active, and staying informed. For some persons, um, watching your favorite TV show, I've heard some people say, oh, I've watched everything on Netflix. But if you do it in a, in a systematic way, is there a theme to what it is you're watching? Or are you just watching TV randomly? 
That way, you can assist yourself in maintaining that sense of balance. Ensure, as far as your comfort is concerned, that even while you're at home, you wear comfortable clothes. Maintain a healthy sleep pattern. If you find that your sleep is interrupted at night, whether it is because of your fears or your anxieties, take a nap during the day. Even if you don't sleep, but at least lie down and take a nap because your physical body needs to be rejuvenated. The Director of Human Services encouraged the public to limit their time on social media, allowing only for connecting with friends and family and engaging in conversations that will keep the mind active so as to aid with psychological issues due to social distancing. There's a lot of information going around. Some of it is good information, some of it is pertinent information, However, some of it, as we all know, is fake news. We also have a lot of memes and a lot of jokes. However, as far as the memes and the jokes, we also have to remember that some of them may be insensitive to those persons who are actually um, in quarantine, those persons who have actually developed symptoms, and those persons who have been diagnosed. So sometimes, and as much as it may be funny to some of us, to other people, it may actually be offensive. And so I urge you, in terms of sharing these kinds of things, to be vigilant and to be cognizant of who it is you are sharing things with, especially if you are sharing it in a group. Who are the persons in that group? Are there persons in the group who might be offended by some of the things that are shared? Anyone in need of psychosocial support is asked to contact the ministry officials at 722-6575 or 518-4157. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. The Water and Sewage Company Inc. Wasco wishes to inform the public of a drought warning issued by the Met Services Department and concerns relating to this prevailing dry season and the impact it is currently having on the water resource. Dry conditions continue at this time and the prediction for this weather pattern has also been forecast well into 2020 by weather experts. This has continued to deplete our raw water supply from the traditional abstraction points within the river system as well as the John Compton Dam Reservoir. As a result of this dry spell, Wasco is currently considering a number of options to ensure that the available water supply is distributed to all customers. Considerations under review include the extension of a valving schedule, which has already begun in some communities. Wasco also urges customers to immediately implement the following measures. Repair all noticeable water leaks within the home and or premises. Install or replace defective ball valves in your toilet tanks. This is the utilization of a hose for washing vehicles, among other things. Stop watering lawns. Shut taps while using soap on your body or shaving or brushing teeth. Shut taps while washing, rinsing dishes or clothes. Harvest rainwater whenever possible for household use and watering plants. Use water saving devices on the taps and hoses at home. Wasco is mindful of the increased demand for water at this time as the country seeks to stem the spread of COVID-19 for the mandated health protocol of frequently washing hands and clothing, etc. Wasco seeks the full cooperation of the public to the foregoing as it strives to manage the supply of available water to serve every community. The government of St. Lucia, due to the spread of COVID-19 and in an effort to protect the citizenry, has had to postpone St. Lucia Carnival. Minister of Responsibility for Culture and Creative Industries, Senator Honorable Fortuna Bell Rose, diving into the matter recently on the National Television Network, said the situation is being monitored. Given the government's focus on positioning St. Lucia to respond to COVID-19, St. Lucia's Carnival has been deferred to next year. The decision, which was made after consultations with different stakeholders, took into account several issues, including international travel restrictions, availability for government funding, and reduced disposable income of patrons. Minister with Responsibility for Culture and Creative Industries, Senator Honorable Fortuna Bell Rose, noted that as St. Lucia continues to battle COVID-19, the situation is continuously being assessed. However, alternative measures will be put in place for individuals involved in the creative industries. 
if the situation changes within this year, um, while we may not be focused on carnival, but there will be other activities that may be organized to ensure that those persons who economically benefit, you know, from the carnival, um, from the music industry, you know, here, um, you know, would, would, would carry on. So it's, it's next year for the carnival, but importantly for our artists, I think they can rest assured that this government um, is doing all it can to ensure that it continues to program with them um, along the way. And even in terms of the, the challenge of unemployment for some of them, yes. I think in the package that the Prime Minister is looking at, I mean, he's also looking to cater for those persons who would have been contributing and mm -hmm. working, you mm -hmm. know, during that period and, and, and they're not. So I think um, we have a committed government you know, to the arts and the artists. There's no doubt about that. It's, it's in every, everything that we do. Um, and so we, we're grateful um, to the artists for, for giving of themselves to our nation. Senator Honorable Fortuna Belrose encouraged the public to institute measures such as social distancing to aid in the fight against COVID-19. I think to a large extent, the majority of solutions, the majority, yes. you know, um, the feedback has been great um, with respect to the response and understanding, you know, of why we are doing this. Mm -hmm. um, it's not deliberate. You know, it has to be done, you know, because the object for our government is to ensure that we save lives. Mm -hmm. We do not have the resources that the big countries have to deal with this issue. The most we can do is, you know, enact situations like this, yes. the social distancing yes. and keeping people away from each other so that we can decease from spreading the virus in the way, the rapid way um, that it is known to, 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 to be... Um, to be produced so so i think generally solutions have been supportive um and responsive like i said culturally we we love to to hug hold and be a part of everything mm -hmm. but now we are understanding it's okay to stay away yes. from each other and still celebrate you understand each other minister belrose noted that the welfare of citizens is most critical to the government as we say into solutions prepare you know um, we've given you we gave you a week mm -hmm. prepare you know, it's not just a week. It's like a hurricane is coming. We know it's coming. We gave all the coordinates and everything. We know it's coming. So we prepare. Mm -hmm. And so COVID-19, this is just the beginning, you know, just the beginning at the start. So this is not it yet. You know, it's we at the start of this and we ask in solutions to take precautions from now, because if we don't, it will be catastrophic yes, for us yes. and we can blame no one else than mm -hmm. ourselves. Senator Honorable Fortuna Belrose reassured the government's commitment to the fight against COVID-19. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Novel. Mm -hmm.